All right, guys. So this is what I'm going to be playing with today. Uh, I really want to get the pistons mounted onto the rods, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and set the ring gaps on all the pistons. Um, you got all the rings there. It's pretty. It's important to note that in the bags, there's a. Uh, they're marked first ring, second ring, and the oil rings. So the first and second rings are actually different bags. Um. But first, let me show y'all how what I had to do to actually uh, knock the cap off the the rod. Because they're actually press fretted very tight. They're very hard to get off. And what I did is I grabbed some of the ARP bolts. Just went in maybe like, I don't know, three or four threads. Maybe more, I'm not sure. Got a little rubber mallet. And I just hammered the bolts until it uh, cracks free. One side. Yeah, you got to hit pretty hard. There. Crack loose. So I'm going to back the bolts out and just go ahead and put in uh, the last two. I think I have two rods to put bearings in. Just to kind of stay organized, I'm going to put the bearings in there. Start to lose track of them. Notch to notch and put it back together just to kind of stay organized all right so i got those last two rods done got the all the caps separated all the bearings in there just to kind of keep everything together and organized uh get this old bearing out of that piston um okay so now i'm going to go ahead and start working on setting the ring gaps um i guess i'll start with the first ring Okay, so just from looking at the top and bottom, I was trying to find the taper, because rings usually have a taper. Um, the top ring will kind of scrape the compression up, the bottom ring will have a taper to scrape the oil and stuff down. But I noticed the top ring does not have a taper. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's square cut, but the second ring does. It has a little lip on the bottom side. So the top ring does look to be square cut, but I'm going to face the markings uh, facing up just like the bottom ring. The bottom ring is uh, tapered, has a little bit of a lip, and the markings up puts that in the correct position. So I'm just, I'm just going to match it up. So I'm going to go ahead and set the top ring in there and see where it sits. And this is my professional ring gap kit. I got a, a just a hand file, uh, feeler gauge, some uh, 400 and 800 grit sandpaper just to kind of deburr the edges of the ring after I'm done gapping them. I'm going to go ahead and set the top ring in there. Markings facing up. Okay, so I got the ring in there and from here I'm going to grab a piston and push down just to make sure that it's uh, flush in the cylinder bore. I'm going to go down maybe like an inch or so. I don't know. All right, that looks to be even. Okay, so I've got the ring in there flush uh, by pushing in with the piston. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the feeler gauge and um, set the top ring to 22 thousandths. So I'm grabbing that now. So here's uh, 22 thousandths on the feeler gauge. Let's see. Yeah, it's uh, it's not even close to going in there. Just just to see, I'm gonna see what actually does go in there to see where it's at. Here's I don't know, 17 thousandths, 17 thousandths go in there. Let's try, step it up to 20. Mm. Yeah, it's right about 20 thousandths. So I'm gonna go ahead and file it just a hair to get it to about 22 thousandths. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ring out. And start to file on it and I'm just gonna go very slowly once you go too far you can't go back so I'm just gonna very easily and stick to one side of the ring I'm just choosing um, I'm gonna choose this side to go ahead and file on and keep if you are gonna do, do it by hand with the file of course keep it square and flat with the edge of the ring so I'm just gonna go Slow and steady. Doesn't look like much material is actually coming off. Mm. 
I'm gonna try that 20 again just to see. Okay, the 20 fits in there very nicely now. I'm gonna step that up to the 22. Let's see if we can get that in there. 22. Just barely. So I'm gonna take it out, hit it one more time, and it should be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab that 22 and see how it feels now. It should be good. It just about went under before, but I just kind of did a couple more. Uh, let's see, just clean it up a little bit. Twenty-two goes in there, and it, so the twenty-two does go in there, and it has a little bit of uh, drag, which is what you want. That's how you know that it's it's you know accurate to being twenty-two thousandths. It goes in without much effort, but coming out it has just a little bit of drag. You can feel it. That's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. Okay, so just to kind of demonstrate what I've done here, I have the four rings set up: uh, top ring, second ring, and these two are the uh, oil control rings. Okay, so the top ring is at 22 thousandths. Go over here, double check that. Good. Okay, the second ring, have that guy at 24 thousandths. Second ring is good. And the two oil controls, I set those at 18 thousandths. Couldn't really find information on those, so I just kind of winged it. Oop, I moved that guy a little bit, but. 18 thousandths and 18 thousandths so I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this piston and this will be the last piston I've gotten actually kind of good at putting these putting these things together first one was kind of tricky um, but I got the hang of it and I, I, I can put them together pretty fast now so let me show you from scratch you start off with the oil control okay you, you put this guy on here all the way at the bottom in the fattest uh, and the biggest gap, okay, and then to get your two oil controls. So here's here's one. Go ahead and slide that guy on there. Walk it all the way down. I'm gonna put this one below this guy. All right, so that's good. This is the second oil control ring here. So we go to get this guy. Walk it. And all right, that's where it belongs. Okay, so here's the second ring, and it is tapered, so that'll go down. Get this on here. Just like that. And the top ring here, make sure the markings are facing up. And be tight. There we go. They're all in place. And like I said, before I install it, I'll make sure the gaps are offset. You know, you don't want your uh, gaps to be lining up like so. You'll lose uh, compression and, you know, burn some oil off and stuff like that. So I'll offset them before installation. But this is just for now, just to keep everything nice and organized, everything together, it's somewhat assembled. All right, so since I have all the pistons uh, assembled, as far as the rings go, I guess it's a good time to actually mount them to the rod. Um, okay, so the larger valve reliefs on the pistons, they face the intake side. So this would be towards the back of the motor. I'm going to go ahead and get all the arrows lined up facing left. So intake valves would be on the back side, if you could imagine that. And on the rods, the notch faces the exhaust. So, yeah, there's, this is the notch side here. Both notches line up on the cap of the rod. They're both on the same side. So the notches would sit like this. Um, towards the exhaust. All right, here's the first rod. Notch will be facing towards the exhaust. Intake valve reliefs are in the back of the piston. I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, slide a uh, wrist pin in there. All right, got that guy in there. Grab some snap rings, and this is what's gonna be pretty tricky. 
All right, luckily I found some needle nose pliers that the late model tech uh, donated to me in this little, in this nifty little red toolbox here. Always uh, getting me out of a bind. But okay, with these needle nose, I should be able to do it. So, all right, here's one piston. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze them. Put the snapper in there. And it's where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the second side. All right, just like that, we have a piston mounted up to a rod. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through them all. All right, there we have it, guys. Uh, all four pistons have the rings gapped. They're mounted up to the rods, and I guess we're just one step closer to actually putting this block together. Uh, I'm contemplating filling the top portion of the block with uh, DevCon. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it just for added insurance, I guess. It's like an aluminum uh, putty, I guess, and it just it's kind of like a, a sleeve guard or a block guard, except it's solid. It's supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be even better and maybe even cheaper. All right, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.